What's going on you guys today? We're gonna to be diving into the effect controls panel in Adobe Premiere. Let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead here and open up Adobe Premiere and I'm gonna create a new project. I'm gonna give it a name, it's called effect controls. And of course, save it somewhere where we'll be able to find it. So come in here, click on browse. And create. Let's make sure we're all working in the same workspace by coming up here to the top of our screen. We're gonna to go to window, workspaces, and let's just choose editing right here. If you're already on editing and it doesn't look just like mine, that's okay. Go to window, workspaces, and choose reset to saved layout. And that'll get it back to its default setting. So let's start down here in the bottom left-hand corner and let's double click here to import some media. So double click in this box. I'm gonna find the media I wanna import. So here's the clip I wanna use. So go ahead and just click on it and choose import to bring that into Premiere. Once it's loaded into Premiere, I'll just go ahead and double click on it right here in my project window to have it load up up here. And let's go in and just choose a simple clip that we want to use. And we'll press I to set the in point and O to set the out point. And we'll go right there. And then I want to add this to my timeline. So I'm just going to click on this and drag it right down here to my timeline and let Premiere get that all set up. There's no sound in this clip, so that's why you don't see any audio. But let's play around with the effect controls with this clip. So right up here in the top left hand window, you see this effect controls option right there. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And you can see I got a bunch of options for things I can do to my clip. So as long as I have the playhead over my clip and I have my clip selected here in the timeline, I can make changes to it. I could zoom in or zoom out on it using the scale. I could move the position of it to the left or to the right or up or down by just moving these and then to change these, I'm just putting my cursor over them and then clicking and dragging to the left or to the right. You can also just click on them and type in a number, but I prefer the click and drag method to move my clip around. You could rotate it if you wanted to, and, um, and then you could come down here and you could even change the opacity of your clip. You could make it slightly see-through uh, if you wanted to. So those are just some of the basic settings you can change here, and you can always come in and reset them by clicking on this little button right here, and that will just get everything back to where it was before you started. The real power of the effect controls window though, you guys, is in the keyframing abilities. Well, let me show you what I mean by keyframing. What I'm gonna do is this clip already slowly moves in towards the waterfall, but I want it to also kind of slowly zoom in as well. So what I'm gonna do to make that happen is I'm gonna use some keyframing. So here's the deal with keyframing, you guys. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create some points on this little timeline right here that basically tells Premiere what to do with the clip. You can see as I move around in this timeline, it's actually moving around in this timeline down here. So whether you're moving this playhead down here or this one up here, we're affecting the same clip. So what I want to happen is for the scale of this clip to start at 100%, then slowly go up to 120% and then stay there for the rest of the clip. So what I'm gonna do is I always wanna start with, what do I wanna start with? Well, I wanna start with the clip at 100%. So I'm gonna put the playhead right here at the beginning of the clip and I want it to start at 100% and it's already there. So I'm just gonna come over here and click on this little clock right here to toggle the animation. And what that's going to do is right here on my timeline, it's going to create what's called a keyframe. And this basically is just giving instructions to Adobe Premiere to say, hey, right here, keep the clip at 100%. And if I don't do anything else, you can see, it's just gonna stay at 100%, it's not going to change. But what I want to happen is somewhere right around here, I want it to have already zoomed into, let's say 120%. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the playhead where I want that to have happened. And then I'm just gonna leave it right there. And I'm gonna come over here and click and drag this to the right until it gets to 120%. And look at what Premiere did. It automatically created a keyframe for me right there. And now as the playhead goes from here to here, it's going to be slowly zooming in to 120% like this. So it was kind of hard to see there because the camera was already getting closer to the waterfall. But at the same time, we were also zooming in on the clip. Let's do the opposite of that to make it a little bit more noticeable. What I'm gonna do is come back and select the first keyframe by using these little arrows right here. This allows us to move from keyframe to keyframe like that. So I actually wanna start on the first one. I've selected it by just moving the arrow over to it. And this time I'm gonna start at 120%. Let's even do more. Let's start at like 155%. And I wanna end at 100%. So I'm gonna press this right arrow to go to the next keyframe. And you can see that put it back to 120 because that's where I set it. And I'm gonna bring that back down to 100. 
And now we should be able to really see what this does. So we're gonna start zoomed in. And how weird is that? It doesn't look like the camera is moving in towards the waterfall. Because remember, we started zoomed in and we were slowly zooming out using the keyframes, while at the same time, the camera was moving closer to the waterfall. And that kind of creates a really cool effect. Okay, very cool. Now, you can do this with anything. You could do it with your uh, rotation. We also want this to be turned slightly because I'm zoomed in so much uh, at 155, I could rotate this a little bit and not have it not be noticeable. What I want it to do though, is I want my rotation to end back at the normal point. So I'm always thinking ahead, where do I want my video to be at either zero for rotation or a hundred for scale. And at this case, I want it to end with the rotation at zero. So my first keyframe I'm gonna create is right here. And I'm gonna create that keyframe at 0.0, .0 degrees. So I'll put my playhead right there. In fact, in order to get it there exactly, what I'm gonna do is click on this arrow to have it go to that next keyframe. And then I'll come in here and I'll just create a keyframe. And that created a keyframe at 0.0, .0 degrees. Cool. Now I'm gonna put my playhead back at the very beginning and I'm gonna rotate this clip ever so slightly. Actually, we'll do it pretty exaggeratedly just so you get an idea of what this is gonna look like. And now as we press play here, this should rotate from 19 degrees to zero degrees. Let's see how that looks. Very cool, we got that rotation look, which looks kind of cool looking on this project. There you go, you guys, we've just done some basic keyframing, but I wanna show you where this stuff gets really powerful. Let's come up here to the top of our screen. Let's click on color. And you can see I got my color editing tools over here. And watch what happens when I come over here and make any change at all to my color adjustments, even a very tiny one. You can see over here in my effect controls window, I now have the ability to keyframe my color controls or my Lumetri color. This can be really cool. So I'm actually gonna reset this back to zero. And let's come over here, let's open up the basic correction and let's come down to exposure. And we're going to um, start, we want this to like slowly get brighter, let's say halfway through, and then let's have it go back to normal by the end. So remember, I, I'm always thinking about keyframing first, my points that are normal. So I'm gonna have the start normal, get brighter, and then go back to normal. So I'm gonna keyframe my normal spots first. So what I'm gonna do is put my playhead at the very beginning and come down here to exposure. And, and while this is at 0, 0.0, I'm gonna click on the little clock right there to add a keyframe at the beginning. And then I'm actually also gonna to go to the very end and I'm going to add another keyframe there by clicking on this little diamond right here. So I now have a keyframe at the beginning and one at the end that say, keep this at 0.0. .0. And then what I'm gonna do is come right into the middle and let's do something extreme so that it's very obvious. I'm gonna click and just drag this to the right and we'll make it super bright. We'll go plus seven for the exposure. Let's go back to the beginning and watch what happens. So slowly getting very, very bright. It should start slowly going back to normal. Very cool. And you can see it playing on here with this little uh, shape right here and also over here. And that's because I expanded out this little triangle right there, that one right there next to exposure, expand that out. And you can really see more of your options there. We could do that with any of these settings here, you guys. So maybe let's do one for saturation. I'm gonna come up here and delete this one. I'm just gonna come up here and click on this little keyframe and press the delete key on my keyboard. And since this one's at zero and this one's at zero, nothing's actually going to change in those. So I'm just gonna leave those there. Let's come down and do saturation. Maybe we wanted to start uh, in full color and have it turn into black and white by the time it gets to the end, easy. Again, we'll start at the beginning. We wanna always create our keyframes for normal. So I'll leave this at 100% and I'll create a keyframe there by clicking on the little clock. I'll move to the point where I want it to be in black and white. And I'll just go ahead and make an adjustment here where I bring that down to zero. And now it's going into black and white. And let's go back and watch that. The video slowly faded to black and white. Very cool. I'm gonna minimize that. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how you can keyframe the color controls. Let me show you one last thing. Let's go back to our editing workspace by clicking on editing up here. And we're gonna come down here into our bottom left-hand window here. And we're gonna click on these little double arrows and we're looking for effects. And let's do like a blur. So I'm just gonna type in blur here into the search window. And let's choose the Gaussian blur. That's my favorite blur. What I'm gonna do is click and drag this out onto my clip and drop it there and let go. And look at what just showed up here in my effect controls window. 
the ability to change the blur. If I just wanna blur the whole thing, I'll just come in here and crank that up and perfect. But that's not what I want. I wanna keyframe it. So I'm gonna put that back to zero and I'm gonna put my clip, uh, let's say I want it to stay sharp until here and then I want it to get blurry. So I'm gonna put it here where I want the blurriness to start. I'm gonna keyframe my normal point, my 0, 0.0, so I'll keyframe that. And then I'll move the clip to the very end of my timeline. And it, you can see it kind of goes to black like that when you go too far, don't worry about that. What we're gonna do is come in here and just add some blurriness. It's gonna be a little bit hard to see. So what I'm gonna do is just crank this up to, I don't know, let's try 78. And then we'll bring this back and we'll put it right there and press play. There are tons of different effects you could add to your video down here uh, that can all be keyframed. So play around with that, have fun, and explore what you can do with keyframing because you can do a ton of stuff. Let me show you one last little bonus clip. Let's come back up here to our source window and let's add another clip. So my in point and my out point, and sure, that's great right there. And I'm gonna drag this down onto my timeline and I'm gonna put it right on top of my other clip so that they're now on top of each other. You gotta really pay attention to which clip you have selected here. So I'm gonna make sure I have this one selected so that now as I come up here to effect controls, I'm now affecting this clip and not that one. You can see this bottom clip has way more options to it because I've added a bunch of things, whereas this clip doesn't really have anything to it. What I'm gonna do with this clip though is I'm gonna put my playhead back at the beginning. I'm gonna scale this way down and I'm not gonna change the size of this. So I'm not gonna worry about keyframing it, but I'm gonna put this way down here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this clip start off the screen and come in and end on the screen. What I wanna do is figure out where do I want this clip to end. So I'm gonna use the position sliders right here to move this down and to the left. And that's where I want it to end. That's where I want the clip to stop. So again, so this is my normal point now. This is my ending point. So I'm gonna come in here and let's say I want it to be in the video right there. So I'll put the playhead right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a keyframe with it right there and perfect. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my playhead back to the beginning. And now I'm gonna use these same sliders again, but this time I want the uh, clip to come in from the bottom. So I'm gonna move that until it's no longer in the frame. And now as I press play, watch this. The clip slowly comes in. But that's kind of boring, that's kind of weird looking. I want that to happen much faster. That's pretty easy. All I gotta do is move this keyframe much, much closer to the other keyframe and watch now this is what happens. And that still was not quite fast enough for me. So I'm gonna move this keyframe even closer like that and let's see how that looks. Man, I think I could still move this even closer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my playhead right between those two. I'm just gonna click on one of these two circles and drag in to zoom in on that part of the timeline. I'm gonna move those even closer together. And now let's see how that looks. There we go, that looks better. I like the looks of that. So. There you go guys, that's the basics of keyframing. There are a few more advanced features that we'll get into later, but I wanted you to see how to do some of the more basic stuff and hopefully you have fun with this.